Hey there, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series of videos where we've taken a look at a semi self-hosted uh, solution over on Linode for people who want to try out a, a self-hosting option, but maybe don't have the resources or just want to play around and learn something new. Uh, if you'd like to follow along with this series, of course, you can absolutely do that. I would start at the beginning and uh, just kind of pick and choose after that which of these containers look most interesting to you. Uh, but uh, in order to do that, I would suggest that you guys head down to the description down below where you'll find a link that will give you $100 in free credit to try out Linode for 60 days. So what we want to take a look at in this video is a, a self-hosted service called Pondrop. If you're not familiar with Pondrop, as it says right here, uh, Pondrop is a self-deployable file hosting service for sending out red teaming payloads or securely sharing your private files over HTTP and WebDAV. So kind of a cool way to just share files with different people uh, very, very easily uh, through just a quick, simple interface that we're going to take a look at here in just a moment. But uh, in order to do that, there are some steps that we'll need to take first. Uh, as I mentioned, this video is part of a series, so definitely check out at least the first video in the series so you can kind of get an idea of where we started and how we got to where we are. Um, but with that said, I think the first thing that we want to do is actually set up our subdomain for Pondrop uh, so that it can be working its magic in the background while we're getting everything else installed. So let's do that now by heading over to our dashboard. So here is our, our dashboard. This is our, our, our tutorial dashboard. And if we head over here to domains and come over here to dbtech.tips, that's the domain we've been using for this whole thing. Uh, and we scroll down a little bit, we can see we've got some C names in here. Uh, these are all of the different videos that we've done so far um, and a couple others, I suppose. But what we wanna do is actually click on add a C name record. Uh, this is just kind of the easiest way to manage DNS when you've got lots of subdomains all pointing to the same IP address. So for this host name, I'm going to type in PWN. Uh, just for Pwn, uh, you could do Pwn Dropper, you could make it whatever you wanted. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do PWN. And then for the alias, I'm just going to type in the at symbol so that it will automatically give us the dbtech.tips domain name to, to attach to. And we'll click Save. And that's it. Now we've got our domain name set up and ready to go. Rather, our, our subdomain is up and ready to go. So now that our domain name or our subdomain is set up and ready to go, the next thing we want to do is actually deploy Pondrop. There are a couple of different ways that you could do this. Uh, one way would be via command line through a docker compose.yml file. Uh, we're going to take the easy route and we're going to use Portainer for this. So in order to get to Portainer, if you follow that first video, you're going to go to your Linode's IP address and then colon 9000 for port 9000. Uh, here I've already got that up and running. And if we come to our dashboard here, we can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. We can open this up and see all of the different apps that we've currently got running. And the next thing I think we want to do is head over here to Stacks and click on Add a Stack. Uh, I'm going to type in Pwn Drop. Oops, like so. And then over here, my other window, I've got this Docker Compose or this stack that we're going to take a look at uh, to get this deployed. Uh, basically, we've got a version two Docker Compose. The service that we're going to run under here is Pondrop. We're going to use Linux server's latest version of Pondrop uh, for our setup. The container name will be Pondrop. Our environmental variables of PUID and PGID at 1000, you can leave those alone. Those are perfectly fine as they are. Uh, for the time zone below that, we've got America slash Denver. Uh, change that to reflect your time zone. And then we've got a secret path of slash DB tech. Basically, the way this works is if somebody just types in, you know, pwn.yourdomain.com to try to access your dashboard, they're going to get redirected by default to a Rickroll video. Uh, you can change that later. I'll show that. But basically, this is kind of what, what little secret word do you want on the end of your URL that will make it so that people can actually access uh, the dashboard for uploading and sharing files? So we're going to go ahead and leave this as DB Tech. That's perfectly fine. Again, if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that I like to store things in home slash Docker slash whatever the container name is. So that's where we've got this volume path right there. I don't change anything after the colon. We want to leave that alone uh, because that's how uh, the container is set up kind of on the inside of the container. Uh, we've got ports 8080 on both sides of, of the, the, uh, the colon there. You can change that if you need to. I don't need to, so I'm just going to leave these alone. However, if you do need to change these, only change the first half uh, of that setup. Don't change the second half again. That's kind of the internal configuration that we're mapping to. So don't leave, or sorry, don't mess with this half. Only edit that half. 
Below that, we've got a restart policy of unless stopped. Basically, uh, if your server reboots, it should automatically come back up. Uh, below that, we've got a network that we're going to attach to. Uh, we set this Nginx proxy manager underscore default network uh, up in the first video. That's how we configured everything originally. So that's how we're gonna kind of keep doing things. Uh, and then we've got to declare that network uh, down here, uh, the same way we might do volumes or something like that. Um, and because we've already uh, deployed this network uh, prior to this deployment of this container, we just got this external equals true right there. And once we've got all of this set up and ready to go, uh, what we can do is scroll down and click on deploy the stack. We'll give this just a couple of minutes to do its thing and then pwn drop should be up and running. Mm. So literally faster than I could take a drink of my orange juice here, pwn drop is up and running. So we're going to click on that. We can see that it's running right here. We can take a look at the logs if we want to do that. Uh, it looks like uh, everything here is up and running. So that's good. Really glad to see that. <clears throat> um, and basically uh, everything here looks good. And if we click on this port 8080 right there, uh, again, it rickrolled us because we didn't put in the secret word or the secret phrase that we decided to put in there. So what I'll do is I'll click on copy link address, paste that in there and put in DB tech at the end. And here we go. So now we're set, set up and ready to go. Now we can create our first user account, or our only, rather our only user account. So that's something to keep in mind with. Uh, so we're gonna type in DB tech. Of course, don't use DB tech, use your username. And of course your password combination. Once you've got that done, click on create an account. Uh, we're gonna close that and now we're gonna log in with the, the account we just created. So we're gonna type that in and click log in. And there we go. So we can see that Pwn Drop is working. However, this is not how we wanna access this securely. What we wanna do is actually put this on that PWN subdomain and attach an SSL to it. So let's do that now. So what I wanna do is head over to our Nginx Proxy Manager dashboard here and get logged in. And now that we're logged in, we can see that we've got five proxy hosts here set up and all of this looks good. What we wanna do though is actually make sure that we've got an SSL set up for this subdomain. So what we'll do, is come over here to SSL, SSL certificates. We're going to click on add an SSL certificate and click on let's encrypt. And then we're gonna type in pwn.dbtech.tips. Of course, you're gonna put in your URL, not mine, and hit enter on your keyboard. And then test server reachability. Cool, your server's reachable and creating certificates should be possible, that's good. Glad to see that, so we'll click close. We're gonna to agree to the terms of service and click save. So we'll give this a couple of minutes to create the SSL. And then once it's done, we can actually uh, go over and set up the domain. Okay, so here we've got uh, pwn.dbtech.tips. Now that domain, if I click it, isn't gonna do anything, um, not appropriately anyway. So what I wanna do is come over here to hosts, click on proxy hosts, add a proxy host, and type in that domain name. Like so, hit enter. Our scheme will be HTTP, our forward hostname slash IP. Uh, what we wanna do is actually head over here to Portainer and find Pwn Drop and grab this IP address right here. Of course, again, yours will probably be different, so go ahead and grab that. Um, oops, we're gonna close this. We're gonna paste that in. We're gonna type in port 8080 there and check all of these boxes there. Go over to SSL, select our uh, pwn.dbtech.tips uh, uh, SSL, check all the boxes and click save. And if everything worked correctly, and I click this, I should get Rickrolled. So let's do that. And hey, we got Rickrolled, cool. So <clears throat> then what I wanna do, since I can't do that, I'm gonna click Inspect. I'm just, I don't like to type stuff if I don't have to. Um, and then we'll do uh, DB Tech, of course, with your secret word, not mine. And then we'll get logged in. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we could then uh, click Upload and choose a file that we wanna use. I'm just gonna use this license file right there. And just that quickly, now we have a URL available for uh, for our license.txt file. Now, if we want to at any point, uh, we could just you know click that right there to copy. We can open this in a new tab or a new incognito window and press enter. And there is our text file. So we know things are working the way we want them to work. So let's close this and then let's open this up over here and let's do uh, an alternate file here just as a quick uh, test. So now if we open this, we've got two different files available. Uh, so we're gonna click cancel so that I don't need that. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna paste that in again. And there is the DroidCam OBS uh, license.txt file that we were looking at a moment ago. However, remember we uploaded a second file. So what we can do with that is click on uh, the facade option there. And then again, we're gonna open this up and paste that in. 
and now we've got a completely different file. Uh, that's how we can we can kind of swap out what files we want available and kind of spoof things as necessary. So it's a cool little option that they've got. That's kind of the the, the thing that I really like about Pwn Drop is that you can do that. Um, so that's kind of how that works. If we come over here to our, our top left, we can see some different settings. Uh, you can change that Rickroll URL. You don't have to, to link this to a YouTube uh, a video or whatever. You can link this literally wherever you want to. Um, and if they don't type in the secret path, that's where they'll get redirected. Uh, I like to think, use things like Google or Yahoo or, or something benign that nobody's gonna to catch on to. So that's what's going on there. You can, of course, change the cookie name and the cookie value if you wanna do that. Uh, if you ever need to for security reasons, that's how you would go about doing that. So we'll click cancel. And really that's all there is to getting a Pwn Drop set up on our Linode instance where we've got all of our other containers that have, we've been setting up through the, throughout the process of this video series. So uh, again, if you'd like more information about any of this or find out how to get $100 in free credit for 60 days over on Linode, head down to the description. Uh, also, let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. But with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I will talk to you guys in the next video.